as it happened. Welcome to Hardwood Classics on NBA TV. I'm Mark Fine. Tonight we feature a playoff classic where the Nets hosted the Pacers in a deciding Game 5 in the first round of the 2002 playoffs. The Nets were the top seed that season, led by Jason Kidd. The Pacers, coached by Isaiah Thomas, were led on the floor by Reggie Miller, known for his playoff heroics. What would happen in Game 5? Let's head to the action. Kittles had such a terrific regular season, as you mentioned, and there you see it. Only the Nuggets over Seattle, and Jeff Van Gundy's Knicks over the Miami Heat have done it. An eight seed defeating a one seed. And they'll redo it as they hit the tip before it reached its highest point. So Joey Crawford will do it again with Keith Van Horn and Jermaine O'Neal. O'Neal easily wins that one, and the Pacers will start us off. A game five. In fact, three of the four Eastern Conference series having a game five. And that's not a shock the way it's gone this year. Miller opens up with a miss. Next. So good at home this year, the third best home record in the NBA behind Sacramento and L.A. They were 33 and 8. Todd McCullough gets started. That's a tough shot right there by McCullough because Miller held his ground, put his arms up. McCullough shot that from not exactly three or four feet away. He was off the block a couple of feet. Kid on Miller. Miller. 0 for 2 to start. Ball knocked loose, and O'Neal puts it in to credit Brad Miller for tipping that. One of the reasons they have Jason Kidd playing Reggie Miller is to try to get Kerry Kittles out the open floor before Miller can catch him on the cross match. McCullough and O'Neal the rebound. Jamal Tinsley brings it up. Tinsley only played 10 minutes in game four. Kevin Ollie had a superb game off the bench as the backup point. As did that man, Ron Artest. The role players with Austin Crozier as well doing the job. O'Neal rushed the shot and Jason Kidd the rebound. You know, a stat from game four that showed you Jason Kidd wasn't right. He only had one rebound. That's a three for Van Horn. Keith Van Horn was in this gym, in this arena at 4.30, taking open shots. You, I can call it a gym because it is a gym to us. You're an old-fashioned coach. Yeah, it's, it's an arena gym, whatever you want to call it. 4.30, he was here taking shots by himself, getting ready for tonight's game. Van Horn has struggled at times in the series, has struggled at the time this season. Inconsistency is number one problem. We were talking to Byron Scott and asked him, what's the key to unlock him? He didn't know. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I wonder, if you're looking for consistency, why isn't he at the arena every game at 4.30? You should have a routine by this time of the year. You shouldn't have to be deviating from what you do. We played like we had that game five cushion. Well, they're playing hard the first couple of minutes here tonight. Kittles on Tinsley, again with Kid on Miller. Martin does a good job knocking O'Neal a little bit further out. Shot clock winding down, so Miller misses the jumper, and here comes Kittles. Nets looking to run every opportunity. Kittles draws contact and puts it in. 6-0 run. The Pacers cannot get themselves into an early hole. They do not want to play this game from behind. Deflected, still plays the ball in New Jersey. All five starters have scored. That's the way the season's gone. Four average and double figures. Three more average, nine points or more. It's the way they have had their success this season. They're one of few teams that win with offensive balance. Most rely on one or two players to do the bulk of the scoring. Ron Artest, that's a two-pointer. And Artest, who really was the star player of game four, knocks one down. That was actually a travel right there. When he caught that ball, he then hopped with both feet before he got set up for that jump shot. That should have been a travel. Well, a four-point lead for New Jersey. Martin from way outside. It's in. The improved jumper, a big part of his season this year. You know if you're Indiana, this big hit's going to come with the crowd and the adrenaline for the home team. You have to weather the storm in the opening minutes. That's a two for Miller. Reggie Miller over for three. Van Horn battling. Knocks it over O'Neal. And it's going to be next ball. You know, Jeff, coaches, assistant coaches have feel, have a certain feel for the players on the team. But one guy that may have the best feel of all is normally the trainer, I believe. I think trainers have a great feel for the mindset of the players. They spend so much time with them. Go back door cut that time by Kidd, who just happens to save it to Kenyon Martin. And Tim Walsh, the trainer of the Nets, as Kerry Kittles hits the jump shot from the corner. Tim Walsh 
said today, we're going to win this game tonight big. He said it's the same mindset we had. There's Tim Walsh right there. Same mindset this team had in game number two. Let's face it. He said that was an elimination game for us. We go down 0-2 to Indiana. We weren't coming back home to New Jersey. He saw it in this morning after the practice. He knew they'd win tonight. That's his feeling. Sometimes trainers, as we call a foul Van Horn, sometimes they have the best feel for a team. They think they do, but I'll say this, Tim has more playoff experience than anybody in the net organization, and he's been through so many playoff uh, deciding games, I think he knows exactly what it takes to win these type of games. Walsh was the assistant trainer with the Knicks for 15 years, he's a Jersey guy. Brad Miller, not the way by Kittles, Tinsley right there to pick it up with the shot clock winding down, he stepped out of bounds. That, that may be the... Uh... Last few possessions for Tinsley, and, and soon we may see Isaiah Thomas go back to Ollie, who played so well in the last game, coming in and replacing Tinsley. Remember, Tinsley does have a bad knee. He's really struggling right now. Kittles on the floater, follows it up to the rebound. Tries it in with the left hand. McCullough's tip won't go. Artest, the quick outlet. Very quick pace in the early minutes. Tinsley just kind of flipped it up there. Kittles for three. McCullough keeps it alive right to Tinsley, and Miller releases. And Reggie Miller with a slam. He looks over at Derek Stafford. He felt there was contact. Jason Kidd was saying out, talking about Reggie Miller and stopping him in a game five situation as Van Horn misses McCullough the rebound, but a loose ball foul against the Pacers. He says, we don't want to put ourselves in a situation at the end of the game where he can win. This is a long lead pass, Tinsley to Miller, and right here, Miller figures on the dunk. There's got to be contact here as Kittle challenges the shot. The officials felt no contact, play on. Looks like he got him on the top of the head. Draws the foul. Shot won't go. The officiating crew, Joe Crawford, Bob Delaney, and Derek Stafford, 54 years of NBA experience with those three combined. One of the things I think we'll see a little bit more of tonight is Jason Kidd involved in pick and roll situations. Normally, the Nets offense relies on movement, passing, reading the cuts uh, determined by how the defense plays you. I think they're going to make a, a, a specific effort tonight to get Kidd into more pick and roll situations to try and get him in the lane. That's just one of the little things that you tinker with when you have a day off. Tinsley the foul, his first. Kidd spoke to the team yesterday. Byron Scott says only about three times during the year did he step up and talk to the team as a group. He did it yesterday, and part of his message was to be aggressive, but also just play the game. Don't try and do anything that you don't normally do. Eight-point lead for New Jersey. A very quick start. Artest struggling with his dribble. Miller falling away. Miller, the Brad variety with the rebound. Reggie's just one of five. And one shot he hit was that dunk. Yeah, Reggie was so, I think, keyed up for this game. When he gets going, watch out. If he gets it going, watch out. He's one for six right now. But he was pacing the sidelines before the game. He refused to do interviews prior to the game. He was zeroed in on what they had to get done here tonight. Just past the midway point, and you see the quick start for the Nets. It slowed down. Kidd. Pretty good for Jason Kidd. We can just see the difference. The bounce to a step from game four. It's the aggressiveness that was the adjustment. No X and O's. It's the adjustment of force and will. You see, Kidd. He's not going to be denied. He put his head down. He drives it to the. Welcome back. 21-19 lead for the Nets. And sometimes you have to find a way to get your teammate Reggie Miller on track. The rebounder with the basketball for the Pacers is going to outlet the ball to Kevin Ollie, who's going to start the fast break. Reggie Miller starts way down low opposite the basketball as they start their transition. Ollie has his head up. His job as the point guard is to know at all times, where is my teammate? Well, here's Miller. You know who else knows it? In transition, Jefferson saying, go get him. He's wide open. Unfortunately, nobody gets to him soon enough. Reggie Miller loves nothing more than pulling up in transition, getting a wide open three. Now he's shooting three for eight from the floor. The concern is, does he have it going right now? Absolutely, and I think what Jefferson should have done is forgotten Artest, who was trailing the play, get to the dangerous shooter, make it, make the play go back to Artest. Well, how many times have you heard during a game, hey, hey, go get him. Go get him yourself if you know he's wide open. The old point defense. 
Miller's made more three-pointers than anyone in NBA history. That was his first one of the night. Jason Kidd misses Kenyon Martin. The emphatic foul. That's the danger. Ron Artest is guarding Kenyon Martin right now when they're playing a small four-man. So when the ball's up on the board, he's overmatched in the offensive rebounding department. Artesto answers back with a three-pointer. He has the strength to deal with it, but not the size in terms of length. So it knocks down that one, and it's a one-point game. Under two minutes to go here on the first. Nets jumped out to a ten-point lead. Aaron Williams. No one went for it. Kevin Alley picks it up. Lucius Harris and Kenyon Martin looked at each other, and Alley was the aggressor. And when Harris is laying on his back on the floor, he looked up at Kenyon Martin as if to say, you know, I thought you were going to get it. And Kenyon's saying, I thought you had it. And Alley made his mind up, I'm going to go get it. There's a loose ball here. Who's going to get it? Martin waits. He thinks that his teammates get it. Harris thinks that Martin's getting it. Ali will finish this thing off. An easy two for Indiana. And Pacers have their first lead of the game. It's an 11-point turnaround. They trail by 10. Now lead by one. Martin, quick move. He's got amazing quickness for a guy his size. If you guard a three-man on him, he can post. You guard a four-man on him, he takes him off the dribble. That's versatility, and that's what wins in this league. And an offensive foul. Jermaine O'Neal, who had foul problems in game four, just yesterday he named All-NBA third team, picks up the personal. And the reason that happened is they were playing pick and roll. Jersey decided to go underneath the screen, and the screener rolled too early. So in essence, the screener wiped out the defensive guard on the move screen. You know, Kareem, he used to get away with that all the time when he played for the lady. They never called him on Kareem. Jefferson, quick spin move. Oh, great block from O'Neal. Let's get back. Good transition defense, and Mercer throws it away. There's the problem when you don't have a true point guard on the floor running the fast break for you. Even though Ali was there, it was Mercer that was leading that fast break. Aaron Williams on the foul. He has been the perfect bench player for Byron Scott all season. Thinks defense and rebounding first, and has a nice little offensive arsenal when you ask him to. Another whistle. A lot of them here in the early going. Wrap that arm around Reggie Miller when he starts moving without the basketball, and you're going to get called for a foul. You cannot give him a choice. He gives him a choice of going left or right. There's the arm wrapped around. That's where the hold is called. Shouldn't That's have it. been behind him. He should have been on the side of him, pushing him out one way. That's Harris's first. And the team not the penalty as we wind down the first quarter. There's about a two and a half second difference between the shot and game clock. Miller trying to get free, bouncing into bodies. Mercer comes up. Mercer fires a two-pointer. Kid, the rebound. It'll count if it goes. Terrific effort. But it falls short. And that will end the first quarter. Kenyon Martin there in the Nets. Came out with a real force. Jumped out to a 10-point lead. As the Nets shot extremely well from the field. Five-point lead for New Jersey. New Jersey Nets trying to get into the second round of the playoffs for only the second time in team history. And last time was back in 1984 in an offensive foul call against Ron Artest. And for Artest, that's his first. Remember, Artest weighs about 255 pounds. You see him throw that, he just kind of like flicks him off, like there's a little gnat on his shoulder and jumps in right hand. Foster and Crozier in the game at the same time now for Indiana with our test Mercer and Kevin Owens. Martin throws it away. Another turnover, number five for New Jersey. Bob Delaney making sure there's no deflection checking with his fellow officials. And let's face the ball. Again, Jeff Foster's got to realize Martin's a left-hand driver. Personnel tendencies are so critical in these games. You've got to take away what players do best. Yeah, that's what studying tape and looking at the scouting reports does. Mark deflects it out of bounds. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. So after that quick pace, game's kind of slowed down a little bit in the intensity on the defense picking up. Austin Proja, only one field goal attempt so far since he's entered the game.
Sass gets inside, struck the foul by Anthony Johnson. Johnson picks up his second, and the Nets with their second team foul. And they've matched up Kenyon Martin against Crozier, probably in response to him having such a good game four. I think that's an excellent move. Make sure you don't let him out of the box early. Yeah, because after O'Neal had that huge first game in game number one for Indiana, they took Kenya Martin and put him on Jermaine O'Neal, and then Jermaine had two very, very, you know, subpar games for him. Well, obviously, he's their stopper against front court people. Ali puts it in. Kevin Ali, who last year didn't play big minutes for the Sixers in their playoff run, but he played important minutes, not experiencing helping him here in this first round. When he came into this league, he could not make that jump shot on a consistent basis. So it's good to see someone put, who put so much time in it rewarded with some success. How about the shot from Lucius Harris? When Lucius Harris came in the league, he couldn't make that shot. <laughs> he can shoot from outside as Mercer comes off the screen. Good open look. And Ron Mercer knocks down another. Mercer now. Three or four from the field. Yeah, he looks like he's got his stroke going tonight. So you, maybe you run a couple more things for him, see if you can get him a couple more baskets coming off screens. Mercer, remember, he averaged almost 20 points a game, granted for the Bulls last year, but he can score. And Harris puts it in. Inside and outside from Lucius Harris, Nets by five. Harris had some big games during the course of the season for the New Jersey Nets, and he's a guy that you don't want to let him get it going because he will string him out from outside. Mercer's got it going. Mercer, like Miller, moves along the baseline extremely well and creates space and open area so that he can get his catch-and-shoot jump shot off. Eight points for Ron Mercer. Anthony Johnson. And Kevin Ollie looks to push. That's the play. Some good transition defense. Ollie looks over to Isaiah Thomas to figure out what play. They want to go to Mercer again. Oh. That's a two. Rod Mercer, really a big spark off the bench. He has the last six Pacer points, and he's the first player in double figures. He's got ten. And it was so good to see because Mort Mercer was double teamed, so he gave the ball up like he should, and then just by Ollie driving the seam, they were in a draw and kick, and Mercer got the jump shot anyhow behind him, a little bit late, a little bit low. Miller did a good job, Reggie Miller, of just coming up with the basketball. Kittles with a tough shot. McCullough tries to keep it alive, but Jermaine O'Neal comes away. Final minute near the first half. Isaiah Thomas, I believe, is going to have a tough decision to make at halftime. Do you go back to Jamal Tensley to start the second half, or do you stay with either the big backcourt or Kevin Ollie to start the second half? Tinsley's, Tinsley's been ineffective since he's had the knee injury. O'Neal's Martin got it on the way up. Good second effort from O'Neal, but he doesn't get a bucket. And Kidd did with three turnovers here in the first half. Shot clock, knowing how much time is left before halftime. You're in a tie game. Why not get the last possession, go into halftime either with a tie or a lead if you make a shot? Absolutely. They, they had a semi-break, but I, I would still like to rather have it in a one-shot scenario. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, it's the AT&T Halftime Report with Ernie, Kenny, Charles, and one of my all-time favorites, Walt Clyde Frazier in the studio in Atlanta. He's an Atlanta guy, Atlanta native, so we'll hear hopefully some rhymes from Clyde in the studio at halftime. Meanwhile, this one all tied up. Game five in the Eastern Conference. It's also, of course, the game five between Boston and Philly. That's tomorrow night. Game five between Detroit and Toronto. Not a surprise when you consider where the Eastern Conference was this year. It just shows the parity. Three game fives. The other series going 3-1. One. one through eight. You can't be surprised with anybody who may advance. 22.6 seconds remaining. Shot clock is turned off, so Isaiah Thomas wanting the Pistons to take the final shot. Kevin Ali continues to get big minutes. Ten seconds remaining in the half. Miller trying to use some screens. Kid is on him. Does a good job fighting over. Now he gets some room. That's a three. And a rebound, Van Horn. 
And Orrin gets it off in time, but well short. And that will end the first half. 24 minutes gone by, and it's still tied at 51. Van Horn for three, and gets the roll. Pete Van Horn feeling it here in the third period. His fifth three-pointer of the game. And a foul against Van Horn, who gets hit with a technical foul. An unlikely reaction from Keith Van Horn. Let's take a look at the foul. Reggie's running that little UCLA or rub cut. Van Horn stands in his path to try and pick up the offensive foul. Disagrees with Joe Crawford's call. Joe Crawford disagrees with his reaction. Most of the time, I hate to see players take technical fouls, but if it's that type of emotion that makes Van Horn that aggressive on the offensive end, I think Byron Scott will take that trade off. He's been emotional and aggressive all night long, but again, you, you get these games, it's, it might come down to just one point, and it's a point you're just giving away. Well, again, it goes back to understanding who's officiating the game, knowing who the officials are, what you can say, what you can't say, how you can react to certain calls. Shot clock winding down. O'Neal stripped by Martin. And a foul on the way up. And Joe Crawford, and we've talked about this during the play, he's one of the premier officials and has been for many, many years. But he's known as an official who gives a very quick tee. He doesn't listen to a lot before he, he tees you up. Kenyon Martin tries to reach in and strip O'Neal of the ball. He turns in right there. From Joe Crawford's angle, he thought it was more arm than ball. Martin, his third foul. Jermaine O'Neal, 10 points, 5 rebounds. Great balance in scoring from the Pacers. You have Mercer with 14, Miller with 13, Brad Miller and Ron Artest with 12, and now O'Neal with 11. That's terrific balance. It is, and that's really what the Nets have been known for throughout the year. Tonight, they're getting the scoring primarily from Van Horn, and the Pacers are getting the balance. And the Pacers perfect from the free throw line, 10 for 10. Game is tied again, just under five minutes remaining in the third. Indiana is shooting 57% from the field. O'Neal deflects and comes up with a steal. Again, the next day a good job of transition. No notion about that three. Brad Miller. And Brad Miller hits another. He's got 14. You know what I love about that play? Brad Miller had the ball in the post on his unpreferred block. He threw it out, stepped out, set a pick and roll, and got it back and got it more of a shot that plays to his strength. O'Neal has not gone for Marcus face. That jump hook. And a loose ball foul is going to go against Indiana. Jeff Foster complaining. Isaiah Thomas smiling as Foster picks up his first 13 foul. It hasn't been an overly physical game so far, but starting to pick up the slack a little bit in that department. And now foul call again. It's against Brad Miller. That's his third of the 14 foul. I was almost tempted to say at the beginning of the second half that the first half kind of moved quickly, moved along, a little lot of stoppages in play. Now all of a sudden we're seeing a lot of whistles here take place, things are heating up. We have a very close basketball game. I'm not sure if now is the time to suddenly tighten things up so much. Timeout Pacers, two-point lead for Indiana, game five to decide who moves to the second round. He's greatest game. And East Brotherhood, New Jersey, watching a game five, as a sports fan, there is nothing better than a deciding game in a playoff series. We've got two of them tonight. And Mr. Stern right next to him there, sneaking in the uh, picture. Now Jason Kidd, second straight game after being dominant the first three, having a subpar game. Is it something the Pacers are doing differently? As he hits the jumper. I don't know if they're defending him any differently. He's always been an inconsistent up and down shooter. His great value is that he makes the game easier for his teammates. He has three assists for four turnovers tonight. 
Shot clock winding down. Kittle's on Brad Miller. He wanted to take advantage of the height advantage and took a bad shot. Kid, good aggressive move inside. And a rebound, a jump ball. Aaron Williams getting involved with Brad Miller, and Kenyon Martin as well. And Williams will jump it up with Brad Miller. Kevin Ollie's going to come into the game. And he might come in for good in the way he's been playing. Played most of the second half in game four. No, he's not going to come in. He didn't get to the scores table in time. So we'll have to wait for the next whistle. Kittles gets it. That was a tough pass. He caught it from behind. Gathered himself and made a nice play. Nets back up by two. Kittles has been quiet tonight. Just six points. They struggled in the series, although hit one of the big shots of the series. That huge three in game three. Miller for three. Reggie Miller from downtown. They're starting to switch pick and rolls, getting some mismatches in the post, but a bigger mismatch is a big play in Miller behind the three-point line. Yeah, last time, uh, before that timeout, they had switched, and Brad Miller had a small guy on his back, and that's when they came over and double teamed, and that time, Reggie took advantage of it, got the shot. Van Horn misfires. Martin snatches it. Oh, what a terrific athletic play from Kenya Martin. Nets back up by one. We've had eight lead changes in this third quarter alone. Ron Mercer. And Kidd goes flying in for the rebound. Here come the Nets. Kittles for three. And Miller grabs it. Looks like he can have a three-point line. He almost got called for a violation. Well, it was the big three by Kittles in game number three, or else this series would be over already. You'd have Indiana moving on to the next round. Under two minutes to go in his third quarter. O'Neal one-on-one -on -one with Kenyon Martin. O'Neal spinning. Tough shot, and he knocks it down. Almost predetermines what he's going to do, Jermaine O'Neal. He'll get better at that as he matures and gets more playing time and opportunities. But he decides he's going. He pretty much knows what his move is going to be, it seems like. Martin. Again, the jump hook. That is his go-to move. I'm going to say it once more. Left driver, left to right spin. You've got to take away what people do best. Mercer. Nice feet inside to Foster and a foul. Ball against Keith Van Horn. That's four on Van Horn. You have to give Indiana credit because of the hustle play, the attempt at the hustle play in the backcourt by the Nets. Pacers had five on four advantage. They didn't pull it out and let New Jersey get back on defense. They advanced it at him, took advantage, and now Foster gets to go to the foul line. Foster just one of five from the line in the series. Free throws are going to be used in this one. He's only a 55% free throw shooter for his career. But he's always struggled at the line. That was perfect. I want to remind you, NBA playoffs continue tomorrow night on TNT. Game 5 of the Sixers and the Celtics from the Fleet Center in Boston, followed by Game 5 of the Sonics and the Spurs from San Antonio. Coverage beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. Two Game 5s tonight, two Game 5s tomorrow. It's going to be interesting right here. Isaiah Thomas is now going to match up with the smaller unit of New, New Jersey because of Van Horn's four fouls. Jefferson came in. Now they're going to bring in Bender to match up so they can play small. So Bender comes in for the first time tonight. A minute left here in this third quarter. Jonathan Bender has played sparingly in this series. one of two. Tie game, final minute, third quarter. Deciding game, opening round, playoff series. Kittles on the follow. Williams keeps it alive. Both teams battling and Brad Miller comes away. 
That's winning the rebounding numbers, 32 to 23. Mender, nice feed to Foster, and a blocking foul called on Aaron Williams, and Foster will go back to the line. This play originally was supposed to start out for Reggie Miller. Instead, the ball reversal gets it over to Bender's side of the floor. And then we see Aaron Williams coming over a little bit late, the body contact, and now Foster back to the line. And it's the first. And you said the play was originally for Reggie Miller. Kittles, that was the best job I've seen him in the last two games, defending him off those single-double screaming type actions. He got in good position to start, and then he trailed him off extremely hard. Foster, a bad free throw shooter, hits three of four here in the final minute of the third. And Indiana back up by two. Shot clock and game clock almost identical. Miller almost got a piece of that. Ali fighting off. Jason Kidd wants to post up. Can't get him the ball. Good defense from Ali. Jefferson, nice drive. Final seconds, Miller. Foster at the buzzer, well short, and that will end the third quarter. Keith Van Horn has come alive for the New Jersey Nets. He struggled much of this series, but a huge third quarter in a playoff career high 25. Kevin Ollie in the game with Brad Miller, Austin Crozier, Reggie Miller, and Jonathan Bender. Crozier, the big game four, has Harris on him. Shuffle pass in, Jonathan Bender. Crozier keeps it alive, still battling. Crozier again, stripped down low. Here comes Jason Kidd. Martin, and a foul on Crozier. First team foul, third on Crozier. I think Jonathan Bender's minutes will be very limited in this fourth quarter, and I'm not sure Jason Kidd will take a rest the entire second half. On our test, sitting right now with four fouls, and Jason Kidd misses the jumper. Miller the rebound. Kidd just three of ten from the field. A couple of shots here for Reggie Miller from Indiana right now. Seems to have a good feel right now for what's going on. If just get a clean look. Got some looks from the pick and roll. I'm surprised they haven't gone back to that where they got the switch they wanted. Holly can't connect. Aaron Williams, quick outlet. Aces get back in a hurry. Kid patient. Aaron Williams and Miller the rebound. Good job of transition defense. Ollie had the ball. The next big man back supported Ali. Got to get those big guys back against great quick point guards that run those one-man fast breaks against you. Miller off the screen. Line drive really short. Reggie didn't like that shot after he shot it. Here comes Jefferson. The rookie draws the foul. And Richard Jefferson will shoot two as Jonathan Bender commits the personal his first. And Jermaine O'Neal comes back in the game. Knowing where your teammates are, advancing the basketball, then let your teammates finish the playoff. The leadership of Jason Kidd so important. And see down the stretch. Two free throws for Jefferson. When you look at Jason Kidd, right or wrong, he's going to be judged and critiqued on how far they go, kind of like Kevin Garnett in Minnesota. Kidd has had five series, playoff series with Phoenix. Only got out of the first round once, and that's because it was against the Spurs who didn't have Tim Duncan. So a lot of people are going to judge him on just how his team does. And it's an important game for him. I'm not one of those. He took a team from 26 to 52 wins with some help. He needs help here tonight to get him out of the first round. I don't agree with that assessment. Jermaine O'Neal backs one in. It's almost like the stuff I'm hearing about Kevin Garnett in Minnesota. Like, you know, well, he just uh, you know, doesn't get Minnesota into the second round. Well, his supporting cast isn't the same as some of the other teams. And some of the matchups they've gotten in the first round, nobody would move on to the second round. It flips it up there. Last year, the Nets won 26 games. The most important thing the kid has done besides the victories, he's changed the image of this franchise. 
And a ball kicked, so the shot clock will remain at 16. Changed the attitude of his teammates. Guys who had been in this organization that didn't believe that they could win here in New Jersey. He walked in from day one and said, we will be in the playoffs this year. Keith Van Horn says what impressed him most about Kim on the first day, he called everybody, including the rookies, by their first name on the first day of practice as Harris trips it. Van Horn said right away, the first second, he comes in and he does that. A simple gesture like that, they knew he was the leader. And Van Horn has certainly responded to him tonight with 25, but he's currently on the bench. I think we're going to see uh, Jonathan Bender sit down pretty soon because really since he's coming to the game right now, he has not had very much productivity. Jefferson misses. Brad Miller, the rebound. I think we'll see our test back soon. I think we'll see Mercer. I think we'll see Van Horn. you got to go with your main guys right now. Crozier drives on Jefferson. Offensive foul. I think Bob Delaney... The lead official was going to call a block, but Derek Stafford blew his whistle and strongly called the charge. Let's take a look at the play. See if Jefferson gets his feet there in time before this contact. I'd say he's sliding in underneath them. It should not have been. Welcome back to the NBA's greatest game. You know, Mike, our partner here, Mr. Van Gundy, since he's been doing the broadcast, he has had so many great observations, so many things that he wants to change in this league. So I, we've been keeping What's like, coming? little <laughs> notes on this. Let, let me see some of the things that there should be no flops. Right? We have the no blood rule, replays. Don't wear the same suit twice. <laughs> you know, we really didn't have to go there again. I thought I could trick you with the new shirt and tie combo, but you being the fashion police was right on top of that. Even your brother noticed it, okay? When your brother calls from Miami and says something, you know you're in trouble. 22 calls about the two suit comment. They call the Van Gundy issues. Kid. Uh, Mercer got a piece of it. And Jason Kidd will shoot two. Mercer's second foul. Pace is already with three team fouls and there's 847 remaining in the fourth and they should add one more I like the technical foul at running and distracting from the bench yes that was yes I have to agree with that that was very good big call by Bob Bellini I wonder if they have talked about that in the league office because I've never it happens in many many games I wonder if it's going to now be a regular call or if this was just Bob Delaney reacting on his own well Tinsley who you saw sitting on the bench he was responsible he was so demonstrative you couldn't certainly ignore it the way he came out but I think you might be right and I agree 100 percent that's something that should be called and I would say if, if that's the case Jeff that they have been notified by the league office to look for it I think it would be a result of that Laker Portland game because it was right there two guys jumping up off the bench trying to distract Robert Ory Shot clock again, winding down. Artes gets it to Kevin Ollie. Artes not going to get it off the time. Yes, he will. But Harris takes it down. That was very close to the shot clock expiring. One point, New Jersey lead here in game five. Van Horn has Artes draped all over him. Martin, Kenyon Martin, big shot. He's got 22. As our test and Van Horn get tangled up. I love that Bob Delaney didn't do the double foul. It would have been both players, Van Horn and our test, fifth foul. The understanding the magnitude of the game, Bob Delaney lets it go. O'Neill and a foul on Aaron Williams. It's only the first team foul against the Nets in the second on Aaron Williams. And Reggie Miller comes in. Ollie will sit down. <laughs> Miller hearing the Bulls as he does in every visiting arena. I would rather, if I was, was the coach, to hear no boos for him. He seems to get excited by booing. Jason Kidd with the steal. Kidd always says his best offense is his defense. Lucius Harris off the mark. So much made of Jason Kidd and his flash. He's all NBA first team named again. But first team defense as well. Miller throws it away. Excellent switch 
by the Nets defensively. They went back to the play that Jeff said that had been successful for them, the pick and roll using Reggie Miller, but they switched out, and Miller had committed in the air, really had nowhere to go with the basketball. That's why we always say take two dribbles off a pick and roll instead of one. Isaiah Thomas having a conversation with his young all-star, Jermaine O'Neal. Pacers five turnovers already here in the fourth. Nets by three in game five. With Byron Scott, interesting enough, asking Jason Kidd and Kerry Kittles, could you name any of the guys on that team? And Jason Kidd said, have it Bernard King. I said, close. He never got Albert. I said, have it a guy in your own gym. They said Eddie Jordan. So not a team that was very popular or well-known. Mike? Thanks, Steve. Next coach, Byron Scott was a rookie when the Lakers were the Lakers when they won that title. Kenyon Martin was six years old when they won that series. Again, the only playoff series the New Jersey Nets have won in the NBA. Oh, and a shot from Kidd. And Mike Fratello was 50. <laughs> Five-point lead for the Nets. This is the largest lead by either team in the second half. I, I think this series right here could be a turning point for Indiana. They need a basket desperately to settle this thing back down. You may see New Jersey go on a run here. Foster for three. Way off the mark. Not the guy, if you're Indiana, you want shooting the three. He did hit one earlier in the series, and that certainly is not his forte. Not fourth quarter, six to go. Kid. Long rebound, Van Horn. Keep Van Horn blocked by O'Neal, but a foul. It's not against O'Neal, the foul, but it is against Indiana. I believe they call it on our test. Van Horn is elevating, ready to throw it down, and that looks like a great block, a block right there by O'Neal. But our test, you saw him push as Van Horn went up in the air. And Keith Van Horn with a chance to add to his game high 25. Kevin Ollie back in the game. Foster will sit. The game has gotten away from Indiana right now. Isaiah Thomas, I think, senses that. He's changed the lineup. He's gone small. Our test is now the four-man against a very big front line for New Jersey. Keith Van Horn having the type of game that Byron Scott envisions having on a more consistent basis. 27 points for Van Horn, a seven-point lead. And Martin kicks it out. Shot clock at 14. It's interesting. That time, Jason Kidd gave Reggie Miller only one way to go, and that was out that side. He wasn't going to let him change directions. He put his body up against him, played between Miller and the basket, and said, you're not going either way. You're going one way. Offensive foul. Jermaine O'Neal on the screen. That's his third. And that's what happens when your best shooter is trying to get free and his teammates are trying to set better screens. Kid makes him go one direction. As Kid tries to slide through, you see O'Neal step up and into him, and that's the foul call on the block. And the intangibles of Jason Kidd. That's now with the momentum, but still plenty of time remaining. Over five and a half to play on the fourth. Kid, tough shot. Ali may have gotten a piece of it. Van Horn falls and Kid right there for the foul. Ron Mercer hit his head and was slow getting up. Isaiah Thomas said to us before the game, I think the key to this game is us being able to keep Keith Van Horn buttoned up. He said he's like a genie in a bottle. We don't want to let him out tonight. That'll be the key. And we said, who was going to get in the lockdown mentality first? New Jersey has two points in over six minutes for Indiana in the fourth quarter. They haven't scored a point in four and a half minutes. And the Nets defense have four six fourth quarter turnover by Indiana. Nets haven't turned it over in the period. Our chest hard drive to the basket on our test with a very big bucket. One of the few times that we've seen Indiana try to put pressure and go at Van Horn who's had such a huge game. Maybe they should have gone at him three or four times in a row so they could put him on the bench with fouls. 14th for our test and finally Indiana gets on the board. Williams to Van Horn and a foul. Ron Artest will be done.
Artest, another strong game, 14 points, five boards, and four assists, but he's fouled out. The New York native enjoying playing near his home, but he's done for the evening, and Keith Van Horn with 27 points will shoot two. Austin Crozier will, will place our test. Well, Van Horn badly misses on the first. You see him deciding games, tied at half, and after the third, that was the case tonight. Three times. We see who emerges victorious in this one. Van Horn misses two free throws. Free throw is going to be so big down the stretch. He's had a marvelous game. One of his rare mistakes tonight. O'Neal and Martin. Kittles looking to help. Oh, he gets inside and blocked by Kerry Kittles. Jermaine O'Neal not even close to Van Horn the rebound. There's still plenty of time. Six seconds left when he shot that ball. Kid didn't have the number, so he brings it back out. The number one seed having to go the distance here in the first round against Indiana. Van Horn splits it up. Aaron Williams the rebound. Brad Miller couldn't get a grab on it. Martin had to put it up with the shot clock winding down. And here come the Pacers. Under four to play. Seven point New Jersey lead. Miller for three. Puts it in. Reggie Miller again. Again in transition. Instead of putting his head all the way into the rim to receive the pin down, he got it very high, which opened up the three-point shot. The first points of the fourth quarter for Reggie Miller. But he still has 345 to try some more heroics. The number eight seed, the Pacers trying for the upset, hanging in there. A major factor right now. Indiana has already gone over the limit for foul. So every time they foul New Jersey, they'll be shooting at both situations. Jersey only with one personal foul here as Jason Kidd hits the jump shot. Kidd with eight points here in this fourth quarter. He's found a perfect time to come alive offensively. Crozier steps back. Van Horn got a hand in his face. And Brad Miller with some good hustle. That was a great range rebound by Brad Miller. Came from all the way on the other side of the floor. Crozier stepped out of bounds. Another turnover here in the fourth quarter. The seventh for the Pacers in this fourth quarter. This is the second or third time a player has stepped out of bounds now for Indiana tonight. Coming up on three minutes remaining. Nets clinging to a six-point lead. Van Horn for three. Way off from Brad Miller to rebound. Reverse some rolls that put Kill out on the point and brought Jason Kidd off the screen down. Pacers still very much alive. Kevin Alley, hard to the glass, blocked for the foul. Martin got a piece of it, but also a piece of Alley, and Alley will shoot two. Kittles gets caught anticipating that he's going to throw a pass to his right, Kittles left, and it gives the wide open lane there, coming down. You think maybe that arm went out a little bit to shend off, to a fend off the defensive player, but instead Ali got the call. Ali has now made his last 23 free throws in a row. His last 18 in the regular season, five for five in this series. Knocks down another. He played briefly with the Nets last season. Split it between New Jersey and Philly. And now back as an opponent, hitting two clutch free throws. Four point game, two and a half to play. Van Horn against Crozier. Two of strong and O'Neal the rebound. Pacers trying to become just the third eight seed to eliminate the number one seed. O'Neal backing in against Martin. Tough shot, won't get the roll. Hard rebound by Crozier and he's fouled on the way up. Austin Crozier will shoot two huge free throws. The two teams that you see going after every loose ball you mentioned before about Brad Miller running out to the sideline to come up with that rebound that bounced there. They understand 
There's two minutes left right now. Somebody's season is going to be over. The competitive spirit for both teams is unbelievable. Obviously, Crozier struggled so far tonight, but he's an excellent free throw shooter. Again, free throw shooting, keeping people off the line, and then rebounding misses so critical. Crozier, 85% from the line during the regular season. What a big miss there. The lead for New Jersey remains four. Now it's three with 2.04 to play. Jason Kidd having a big fourth quarter. Ollie in pursuit. Martin makes his move. Bumped by O'Neal. Feed the Kittles. Aaron Williams wide open. And Brad Miller falls in the rebound. His 13th rebound of the game. Pacers down three with a minute and a half to play. Miller. There was a collective sigh right there. <laughs> and O'Neal fouled, trying to back in. Jason Kidd was guarding him on a switch. And Jermaine O'Neal draws the foul. And for the New Jersey Nets, just their 14th foul. This is because Martin switched out on Reggie Miller. You got Kidd playing behind O'Neal. O'Neal was going straight to the basket that time. So instead, the reach around foul by Kidd. On that last play, the fear of Miller's three caused the Nets to switch out Kenyon Martin to prevent the three, and it left the point guard guarding a third-team All-NBA player in Jermaine O'Neal. It just shows you the fear teams have for Reggie Miller and his late-game three-point shooting. Remember, only one 20-second timeout remaining for Indiana. When they got in that last huddle, Reggie Miller tried to change it to a 20 and keep the full, but the officials said, no, too late. O'Neal. Kittles goes to double. O'Neal powers in. Tough shot. And it's a one-point game. A 10-2 run right now for the Indiana Pacers over the last four minutes. What was a nine-point lead has been cut to one. Kidd the jumper. Puts it in. Jason Kidd, another big bucket. Jason Kidd just answered the challenge. The challenge that they posed to him was, we're going underneath the screen. You have to shoot a jump shot to beat us, and he made it. And Kidd now with 10 points. There's a three. Miller won't go. Fight for the rebound. Kittles comes away and gets it out to Kidd. That is exactly the shot that Reggie Miller has beaten so many people with. Still plenty of time for the Pacers. Kidd a jumper. Crozier the rebound. Quick outlet. Half minute remaining. And Isaiah Thomas will use his final timeout. It's a 20-second timeout with 26.4 seconds remaining in the game. 20 left on the shot clock. And Indiana will have the ball. First, let's go back and take a look at the challenge that they pose to Kidd. Watch the defensive player, Ali, go underneath the screen. Kidd has to stop, pull up, and get the look. They only have a little space before O'Neal shows, but he makes it. Now, here's Reggie. Jason loses his footing. That's about as wide open as he's going to be and about as dangerous as you could ask for if you're New Jersey. But Miller misses the shot. Jason Kidd cannot cheat those screens. He's got to stay attached to him. Run him into the help. Make him put it on the floor. Jeff, let me ask you. They had one 20-second timeout, which they just used up. They had a transition opportunity right there, Indiana. Instead, once Miller got over, he called for the timeout. Would you let him go and transition down three, or do you want that timeout right there? Well, I think he's much more dangerous and much more likely to get a quality shot off in transition. But they may feel a little bit uneasy with Kevin Ollie, who just came in the trade two months ago, getting what they wanted. Now, because they're out of timeouts, do they have to go for the three now? No. But all the strategy must have been explained then in this last timeout, because that's it. Miller coming off the screen. Van Horn switches. Miller tries to get the foul, and he does. Van Horn goes for the fake. And three free throws coming up. For Reggie Miller, one of the premier free throw shooters in the history of the NBA. You know when there's a great shooter, you switch on to him. The idea is to stop him from catching the basketball. Here comes Van Horn. There's the switch out. He switches out late. Make him go back doors. Who's not going to beat you? But why would you leave your feet in this situation? Go straight up. Make him shoot it over the top of you. You got him way back behind the three-point line. What a smart player Reggie Miller is. The shot fake 
off the dribble pickup is very difficult to keep your discipline and stay down, especially late in the game. More players should use that move. Miller 19 of 21 from the line in this series. Van Horn is fouled out. How about the pressure of these free throws for Reggie Miller? He always embraces these type of situations. And now Myron Scott will call timeout. 18.7 seconds remaining here in game five. Reggie Miller, two free throw conference all season long, the number one seed in the playoffs. I'm going to watch Reggie Miller take two more free throws with a chance to tie this game with 18.7 seconds remaining. In his 11 previous years of being in the playoff, Reggie Miller has taken 713 free throw attempts, not counting this series. He's 20 for 22 in this series now. He's shooting 90% from the foul line. His former teammate, Byron Scott, icing him. He probably doesn't think it's going to work, but the net players on the last free throw have to make sure they don't lose concentration because of his great free throw shooting ability and block out. Oh, Miller missing the free throw, and the crowd delirious. Two-point game, making a one-point game. Again, the Pacers out of timeouts. So you got to foul immediately now. They're going to take their timeout. Byron Scott decides whether he wants to take the ball on the baseline or take it up over the half-court line. Obviously, if you could pick your poison, you want the ball to go into a certain guy's hand, maybe a poor free throw shooter or a rookie like Jefferson, and try to foul him, but it doesn't always work that way. You take the foul quickly, and then in the timeout, I'm sure that Isaiah mentioned to him, realize how much time is left and what the score is because whether we're down two or three makes a big difference on what we're going for when we come back down. They have no timeouts left. they got to keep the ball out of kids' hands. Make someone else prove that they're a clutch performer. Kidd gets it right away, and Kevin Ollie fouls him right away. Jason Kidd from the free throw line tonight is a perfect seven for seven. That was absolutely too easy with 18 seconds in your season to get the ball in. Just too easy. Kid in the series over 80%. This season, 81%. Two big free throws here, but even if he makes both, it's still only a three-point lead with 17.3 remaining. Plenty of time for the Pacers, but they are without timeouts. Amazing how an entire season can come down to who makes free throws. And you asked the question earlier, why was he brought here? This is why he was brought here. This fourth quarter is his time. He has the last seven New Jersey points, 11 of his 22 here in this fourth quarter. Two clutch free throws from Jason Kidd. Three-point game. Now, do you foul and, and make sure they don't take a three? If it gets down below eight, I'm foul. I am going to foul. I'm not letting Reggie Miller get a shot. Kevin Ollie goes in and misses a two-pointer. Rebound. Jefferson grabbed it, and he'll shoot free throws with 5.1 remaining. Holly made a good play. He saw that the out, outside passes were covered for the perimeter for a three, so he saw the clear lane. Reggie Miller had changed directions along the baseline. Kittles is lost for sure. Now he's got the rookie on him, Jefferson. Reggie following the ball, hoping that it might take a long bounce. And you know he was running right back behind the three-point line of a bounce long to him. Jefferson, two big free throws for the rookie. And not even close. Still a three-point game. This is the crucial one to make it a four-point game with 5.1 remaining. If he misses, by the time they get to half court, they must foul. They cannot risk it. Misses both. O'Neal the rebound. Kevin Alley brings it up. Throws it across. Miller for three. Oh, he backed it in. He backed it in. And the game is tied. We're going to overtime. You have to foul in that situation. Now the officials are concurring. Bob Delaney singled yes. Joe Crawford now saying, with the other official checking it, and they say yes. It beat the buzzer. And Reggie Miller does it again. Kevin Ollie looked for no one other than his teammate, Reggie Miller. Let's take a listen. And again, the key, listen for the buzzer. That's very, very close. It's such a tough call when it's that close. 
Again, instant replay. Bring it back. <laughs> Let's go. I agree, but the loudness of the crowd makes it almost impossible. Right. The place was just in an uproar. The ball is in his hand. The red light to me, the red light is on behind the backboard, which means right there, the game should be over. If you're taking a look, this is what they follow. That red light, there's the zeros up on top. It's already over. The ball's in Miller's hands. When the official makes a call in this instance, they try and get in the right position where they can see the release of the ball and that red light. It's very hard. You almost have to be in a perfect spot. So very often the official listens to the buzzer. That's the best way where you can watch the release of the ball and hear it. You're not watching two things simultaneously. And listening on the buzzer in that one, it appeared that the ball may have still been in his hand. If you rely on the buzzer, that is so hard to do. The crowd is, you know, is so loud. How can you possibly do it? And then if the official is not in the perfect spot to look at the red light going off. We just saw uh, Commissioner Stern. He has mentioned that they are going to look at instant replay and if it has a place in our game. And I think it certainly has a place in our game in last shot situations. I don't like it that a team can work so hard like New Jersey, officials working hard, and then not have the tool of modern technology. It, it, this is no statement against the quality of the officials. These are the best officials we have here. But as Miller turns and banks this thing off the glass, there is a split second difference between when it was out of his hands versus when the red light came on and the clock was at double zero. Bob Delaney's in his 15th year in the league. He's worked a lot of big games. He's one of the better officials. It's a tough call. It appeared that the ball may have still been in his hands. It's an impossible call when it's that close. You, They can't be sure if they were right or wrong. Derek Stafford, the third official, he was also one of the officials in that Baron Davis game that just happened last week when uh, Charlotte and Orlando played. You must be saying, what am I getting involved in? But so, Jersey's got to gather themselves here. It's over. They've got to move on. They've got to regain the momentum. O'Neal misses, and here comes Kidd. Five-minute overtime. <laughs> the game five coming to an extra period. Jason Kidd had a sensational fourth quarter. But again, the Nets decided not to foul in those final seconds. Instead, gave Miller the chance for that three. That's a two from Kidd. And Brad Miller the rebound. Our test out was uh, fouled out. Van Horn fouled out. There's role players on the floor that are not used to these situations, like Richard Jefferson, who missed the two free throws. Miller, the floater. Reggie Miller puts it in. And the Pacers get the first points of the overtime. Ron Artest is fouled out for cheering on his teammates. Do you see a lessening of energy by New Jersey coming out? Well, suddenly there's a drop off, a little disappointing because they can't believe that anybody's going to make that kind of shot. It's important right now. They regain their focus, just like Charlotte did to win their game as Williams jumps in with that jump hook. Baron Davis got that team together after the shot was taken away from him that would have won that game. Instead, they regrouped in overtime, went on to win the game big. And Aaron Williams, a journeyman, a role player, but a big role player for the Nets, ties it up. Miller trying to draw another foul, flips it up, does not get the roll. Martin battles a rebound and a reaching foul call on Jermaine O'Neal. In the overtime, it's the fourth team foul sends you to the free throw line in the penalty. I think a great substitution by Byron Scott to get Lucius Harris in the game. More experience, better perimeter shooter. The New Jersey Nets had a nine-point lead with five and a half to go in regulation. And now we're in the extra period. Martin. Bumping. And a foul call against Jermaine O'Neal. And that's his fifth. Second team foul against the Pacers. In the overtime, you also get an additional three timeouts. You should go back right to Martin in the post again to see if they can draw that sixth foul. Sometimes the best guy to play against is somebody with five fouls, but O'Neal knocks it away. But last touch by O'Neal, however, only three seconds remaining on the shot clock. Well, O'Neal had pushed him so far off the block, almost came up with the steal. Only three seconds remaining here on the shot clock. Was that possession by O'Neal when he batted it off? Kidd has to put it up. And Mercer the rebound. Under three minutes to play in OT. 
care whether you call Reggie Miller or Mercer the small forward here, but they've gone now with a lineup of Hollywood they like for the ball handling, Mercer and Miller, who can make shots for them. Mercer fires and puts it in. Ron Mercer with a big game, 16, and for the first time in the series, the team has reached the 100 point mark, and they needed overtime to do it. They're looking to attack Kerry Kittles defensively. The Pacer bench, once again, has played very big. Martin on the pull-up, rushed it. Brad Miller, good boxing out with his 15th rebound. And you can see that time Jermaine O'Neal took away that left drive by Martin. He made him go right, took one dribble, pulled up and shot that jumper. They're just going to straight isolations against Kerry Kittle. He's got to take the challenge. Miller right back to Mercer. Here comes Mercer. Inside, tough shot, no, offensive foul. Mercer picks up his third, and he's shaking up on the play. As Mercer turns the corner on Kittles, the next net coming over on the defensive rotation is Jason Kidd, who just gets his feet planted outside the restricted area. Huge defensive play from Jason Kidd. That's down two with the ball. NBA's greatest game. They've gone to overtime in the deciding fifth game. Reggie Miller, the huge three to tie it at the end of regulation. Can the Pacers become just the third, eighth seed to knock off a number one seed? All those intangible things you talk about, character of people, the will to survive, understanding that this is it. You're going home or you're going to go on to the next round. All those small things show up in these kinds of situations. Martin again with that quick shot and he gets the roll. We're tied again. 24 for Kenyon Martin. The crowd's been on its feet most of the overtime. Miller for three. Bang! Reggie Miller again. And the Pacers up by three with a minute and a half remaining. He wants the ball right now. You can see it. He's clapping for the ball. 29 for Reggie Miller. More playoff heroics. Kidd answers right back. And Jermaine O'Neal just missed that one. He came out from behind the screen to try and help Ollie just short of getting a piece of that shot. A one point Indiana lead. Here's the switch out to prevent Miller's catch and shoot. Williams knocks it away. Harris double teams. Ron Mercer hits some big shots and hits another. What a performance from Mercer off the bench with 18. It was a nice pass out of the double team that time by Jermaine O'Neal. He wanted to hit Miller. Miller was cut off. He looked diagonally across and got Mercer. Kidd with the left hand. Oh, what a play from Jason Kidd. Final minute. Game five. One point game. Kidd's got to stay attached. Kevin Ali on the pull-up, way short, and Kenyon Martin able to grab it, and a foul on Brad Miller, his momentum pushed him in. For the Pacers, only their third team foul, so no penalty yet. Nets ball with 29.9 remaining. Now, this is a shot Reggie Miller is used to making. This floater, when you get up in the air, and you're kind of like off balance. Miller's made a hundred of those things, but for Ali, that's not the norm. And they changed the matchup, they put Mercer in. Martin with the slam on the kid penetration. Nets back by one with 26.2 remaining. Notice how quick he went. That was in case they did not score that time. He get a good shot. They had plenty of time left. It's the Nets' turn to take the lead. One point advantage, 26.2 remaining. So 2.2 difference between game clock and shot clock. You see the timeout situation. Nets with a foul to give. Understanding that we have 26 sec seconds remaining in the game. Indiana has a full 24. You can get the ball inbounds now, get your people situated, and you have plenty of time to run screens to get the guy that you want to get the open shot. That's Reggie Miller. But my second choice right now is Ron Mercer. If they gang up on him, look for the next pass to go to Mercer for the open shot. And sometimes it's not the first shot that beats you, it's the second shot. So they've got to do a great job in blocking out. They got the switch they want. O'Neal against Kidd, and a foul. They had the foul to give. So the Pacers will inbound with 18.8 seconds remaining, still trailing by one. Now, if you run the same exact play, are you going to get the same switch this time? I wouldn't. It's got to be Jason Kidd. You are a great defender. You stay attached. One possession, one stop, and you're advancing. The Nets 
One of the reasons they're the number one seed is because they've been able to make stops. They've got O'Neal and Miller on the same side of the floor. That's where they're going to play from. They go back to O'Neal. Martin right up on him. O'Neal spinning, stolen by Kenyon Martin. And then the foul on Jermaine O'Neal. Kenyon Martin with a terrific defensive play. And he'll shoot with 8.2 remaining. O'Neal is fouled out. Martin becomes the aggressor even though he's on defense right now. He's not going to let Jermaine O'Neal take it. Once he feels the ball is brought down low, he's got those hands in there. He wants to get a deflection before O'Neal can run that drop step spin move into the middle of the lane. Now Martin is not a great free throw shooter. In the series, he's 71% during the season, just 68% here tonight as you see two for three. Again, we could be in the same situation. Indiana has still a timeout. But if they make both and they decide not to take it on the push up the floor, New Jersey has to foul to prevent the three. That, of course, if Martin hits them both and misses the first, it's still a one-point game. Huge free throws. Remember that huge deflection in the Philly game when Derek Coleman got his hand on the missed shot, tipped it back out again. Martin hits the second, and Isaiah Thomas will use his final timeout right now, and they'll advance the ball. You know that Reggie Miller is the primary three-point threat. Austin Crozier can hit a three, and Ron Mercer capable of hitting a three. But just the fact that they're a threat may open up that two-point shot for them. They just got to tie and get to the next overtime period. If the three is open, pull the trigger and shoot it and run off the floor when it goes in. And they can't go for Miller's pump fake, which will get him on the line. They've got to stay down if they switch out. No fouls to give. Miller gets past Kittles. Miller inside with the slam. Reggie Miller ties it with 3.1 remaining. The Nets have a 20 left, and Byron Scott will use it now. It, exactly what Coach Fratello just said. They were so worried about the three that they he drove it to the rim, and he got the dunk. It's exactly what they wanted opened up. And Reggie was smart enough to understand we only need two. There he is jumping out on the three, and he goes right around Kerry Kittles, who uses up no time off the clock and trying to stop him. That's the threat of Reggie Miller. They're switching out on him. Don't let him get started on a three, but play defense, for goodness sakes, instead of giving him a clear path to the basket. And the Nets grateful for the new rule this year. There used to be a 20-second timeout. You could not advance the ball. Now you can. And they'll get it in their front court by the 28-foot line with 3.1 remaining. Plenty to get off a quality shot. Ollie back in the game on Kidd. He's got to keep him in front and make him shoot the ball over the top. And if I was guarding the inbounder, I am not letting that ball get into Kidd easily. So you play on the top of the inbound on his right hand and force him to throw it to the corner, you tell him. He says they seem to want to bring Kidd out to the top all the time. Neither team with timeouts remaining. And both teams in the penalty. Martin to Kidd. Kidd makes his drive, puts it up. No good. Double overtime. The wild Eastern Conference continues from the regular season to the playoffs. Jason Kidd had a good look. But we'll go to the second overtime to see if the number one seed can advance. With O'Neal fouling out, it takes away your number one low post option. But also, Crozier now coming in the game has to guard Martin and or Williams. Kidd has been just superb from the fourth quarter on. He struggled a good part of the game, but has made all the big plays. Kenyon Martin. Martin on the pull-up. Harris keeps it alive. Fight for the rebound. Still lost. And Crozier comes away. As long as Crozier keeps fighting Martin that way and makes him come out 10, 12 feet off the low block there, you can live with that. Miller hit the big three at the end of regulation that may have come after the buzzer, but it sends it into the first overtime. Mercer, quick shot. Rebound, not close. Last touch by a kid. Pace the ball. Again, they switched the initial pick and roll, but it left them vulnerable on the second shot. Brad Miller, size advantage over Kittles. Kid comes over the top. It deflects off his hand, out of bounds. Same scenario in the overtime on the fourth team foul. Of course, you get three more timeouts. Oh, 
Mercer trying to take Kittles off the screen. Martin switches. Crozier has kills on him. Crozier backs in. Draws some contact. Kevin Allen hesitant to shoot at first. Crowd wanted to travel, but Harris gets the rebound. It's interesting. Here comes Kittles. Draws the foul and one. Bad foul for Mercer. And Kittles with a chance for a three-point play. That's bad transition defense. You should never give up a layup like that in this particular situation. And it was interesting to see the hesitation in Ollie. In game four, he didn't. He shot it freely. Here, Kittle's touch foul. you got to put the guy on the line for two free throws there. There can't be any touch fouls going down the stretch of these games. I didn't know who Ron Mercer thought was going to pick him up running down the floor. Ron Mercer was running down the center of the floor, and you had Kittle's out in the right lane. you got to push out and find him. Mercer's played a solid game but made a bad decision. Nets by three here in the second overtime. Miller, the three. Won't go, Martin the rebound. Still three and a half to go in the second overtime. Uh, they want to run four corners right now, run the clock out. That's it, rest of the game. <laughs> Side pick and roll going under still. Martin calling for it against Crozier. And a foul on Crozier. Paces with their second team foul. Crozier now has five. Remember what we said. Crozier that time let it get it down low with his back to the basket, and then he's a problem for Austin Crozier. He's got to get on top of him, front him, force him to step out off the block. Shot clock reset to 14 as they inbound. Jason Kidd deflected by Miller. Ollie trying to go for the steal. Kidd knocks it down the same shot that could have won it for him at the end of the overtime. Instead, it gives him a five-point lead in the second overtime. Under three minutes to play. Crozier fakes. Martin stays in front of him. Mercer, tough four-way shot. Ron Mercer offensively, a superb game. He now has 20 points. Three-point, New Jersey lead. Kidd spinning, kicked by Miller. Shot clock will remain at 14, 2.32 to go in the game. Three-point lead for New Jersey with two and a half to play in the second overtime. Watching Jason Kidd's right leg when he plants it, extends it right there. He hurts the right leg, he comes up from this thing, he starts lifting, and then you see him reaching for his thigh area. He may have pulled the ham hamstring in there, could have pulled something in the groin area as his foot jammed in the lane. Kidd has been sensational in the fourth quarter in overtimes. There you see the total numbers. That's after a struggle to start. He only had 11 points after three quarters. Shot clock winding down. Martin makes his move. Tough shot. And rebound Brad Miller. Miller with six points. Going transition. Boards. Push the ball. That's the best chance you have to get a good shot. Mercer. Tough shot. Harris may have gotten a piece of it. And Lucius Harris comes up with a loose ball. Huge defensive play right there. Ron Mercer looked like he had a short two. Two minutes to go in the second overtime. Kidd steps back. And Miller another rebound. They've needed him again with our test and Jermaine O'Neal. Having fouled out, Brad Miller's done a superb job on the boards. There's extreme fatigue on both sides right now. They've got to find ways to make shots. You're talking about 54 minutes for Martin or 50 minutes for Kidd. Kidd knocks it away, and a foul on Austin Crozier. And Crozier is fouled out. Kidd has played the entire second half in overtimes. And it's the 14 foul. Jason Kidd is not going to just stand behind him. He peeks to the outside and then runs around to the inside to get a piece of that ball. He knows he's given up a lot of size, and then he goes down on the floor. And like I said, he's only in his 51st minute of this game. The will to win. How far are you willing to go to win? Jason Kidd, the entire second half in the overtime, playing a 6'10 guy in the post, deflects it, and then hits the floor. He wants to win this game to advance to that second round. Courage and will. That was only the third team foul, so the inbound with a minute and a half remaining. Next leading by three, the number one seed. Mercer got a piece of it, 
Brad Miller touched it last as he goes crashing into some cameramen along the baseline. We've seen how important an entry pass can be. Sometimes with the fatigue setting in all these minutes, we saw Reggie Miller throw a bad entry pass at the one end that Kid stole, and that one right there, almost a bad entry pass by Harris. Shot clock at 10. Kid looking to make his move. Shot clock winding down. Kid has to put it up. Oh, he cuts it in. Ollie right in his face. And the Nets back up by five. 31 for Jason Kidd. You look at his face, he looks exhausted. He is. A minute remaining in the second OT. Offensive foul. Another illegal screen. This one, Jeff Foster. The, the problem that's happening is Kevin Ollie is not going from side to side so that he has a good look at the passing angle to Miller. Jason Kidd is going over the top of all these screens. That's why he's called right here as he goes over. There's the left hip into him, and he goes down on the ground. You've got to get in a slot to be able to make that pass if your offensive guy is going to fade to the baseline. Just on a minute remaining in the second overtime. Still timeouts remaining for both teams. Nets have a foul to give. They'll have the ball. A five-point lead. They were chanting MVP for Jason Kidd during that timeout. He certainly has played like one here in the overtime and fourth quarter. He's cramping up, according to Dean Lynham, and Timmy Walsh, the trainer, trying to help him out. Took a shot there as he went over the top of that on from the left hip. Hit him in that leg area, which is so vulnerable to be injured or bruised, but... I don't think with 56 seconds remaining, it's going to keep that the game. We saw the 51 minutes that did. He's played the entire second half in overtime. And wisely taking time off the clock as the MVP chance continue. Two. Finding Martin. Martin, tough shot. No, no. Offensive foul. He lowered the right shoulder. And Martin called for the foul. That's the first Nets turnover in 26 minutes. They've really taken care of the basketball. You can see Martin as he gets the one-step advantage now, takes the right shoulder and moves in to the defensive player. Offensive foul. Kevin Ali with 35 seconds remaining. Pacers down by five. Miller fighting over screens. Harris bumped him. Brad Miller. Reggie for three. And Kenyon Martin the rebound. They foul him immediately with 20 seconds remaining. Kenyon Martin will shoot two free throws with the Nets leading by five. And that was a nice job by Brad Miller that time. He took the ball, had nowhere to go with it. He drove the ball to the middle of the floor and hoped that he and Reggie Miller were on the same wavelength, hoping Reggie would back out and spot up behind the three which Reggie did. But remember, in that situation, when you're down five, you need a three and a two or a two and a three. Doesn't matter which way you get him. Martin missed a free throw earlier. That helped the Pacers tie it up for the overtime. Knocks that one down. Kenyon Martin, 28 points. Six-point lead with 20.1 seconds remaining. Pacers still have a couple of timeouts. But they're in a big hole right now. Martin with two clutch free throws, and it's a seven-point New Jersey lead. The Nets right now with a comfortable seven-point lead with 20.1 seconds remaining in the second overtime. I say comfortable, but Reggie Miller has worked some miracles before, of course, against the Knicks, had that eight points and 8.9 seconds in the 95 playoffs, but it would be some kind of miracle finish if he could pull this one out. Well, in that game that you just spoke about, we lost concentration, quick three, couldn't get the ball in, another quick three, and then the untold story is we got fouled because Sam Mitchell thought they were still down and we missed two free throws. Then we fouled Miller and he made the free throws. Nets, by the way, have a foul to give. And they still have one timeout left. Kevin Ollie drives, Williams all over, taking a lot of time, he stepped out of bounds. And that may do it. Seven point lead, 15.2 remaining. And the Indiana Pacers attempt at the huge upset as Mercer fouls. They come to an end. Lucius Harris 
with Sue too, although I don't know if you can say huge upset in any Eastern Conference playoff series this year. Mercer his fifth foul. 14.1 remaining. And Kidd's still bothered by the cramp. What a performance he's put on in the fourth quarter in overtimes. The Nets hold on. They'll face the Charlotte Hornets starting game one here Sunday. And Jason Kidd's coming out of the game. There you see the season series. How about Charlotte winning that series without Jamal Master and their leading scorer. Tremendous job by Charlotte. And having to start that series with Jamal McGlure suspended. Final seconds, a nine-point lead. Reggie Miller's going to put up another three. And connect Johnson a rebound. And the New Jersey Nets dream season will continue. As they call a foul, they'll advance to the second round for only the second time in the team's NBA history and the first time in 18 years. Well, let's go back to the beginning of the game. Like Jimmy Walsh, the trainer said from New Jersey, we got this one tonight. He knew it all along. Big, big. Indiana Pacers played a great series. They took them to the limit and nearly pulled off a second upset. 3.4 seconds remaining. Jason Kidd, the leader down the stretch. The big plays at crunch time. 31.7 assists and eight rebounds. They needed double overtime to do it, but the number one seed advances to the second round. Some nice displays of sportsmanship as this hard-fought series comes to an end. That first playoff series, they defeated defending champion 76ers in the first round, lost in the second round to Milwaukee. This time, these current Nets will play the Charlotte Hornets in the second round. Jason Kidd, a spectacular performance, and he's with D-Lineham. Yes, he is. He's uh, getting a lot of congratulations from a lot of people, including Reggie Miller. Jason, I know you're exhausted. The hopes of an entire franchise rested on your shoulders in a double overtime elimination game. I don't know, just went, went through your mind time and again as this one seemed like it might slip away. Well, Reggie, uh, Reggie's, you know, anytime Reggie uh, is involved, he's always going to make the big shot. And uh, I was like, man, I hope we're not like the Knicks because he always comes back to buy them. But, uh, you know, it was a great game on both teams. Nobody gave up. We just fought and uh, we got lucky and won tonight. I know yesterday that you had talked to your teammates and challenged yourself as well to come out with a different kind of intensity than game four. How proud to see the Keith Van Horns, oh. the Kenyans, and all of them rise to that they again. They, they were the ones that carried us today. Kenyon and, uh, and then Keith came out huge tonight and showed the world that he can play at a high level. And uh, we're going to need him throughout the series to uh, help us advance. And, you know, we got a tough opponent coming in in Charlotte. They're playing extremely well. So uh, we got us to get ready for them. I once asked you where the will to win comes from. You look like you were struggling physically. Are you all right, or is it just you were leaving it all out on the court? Well, chasing Reggie is no fun, and I can see why Kerry gets tired. But, you know, my body started to cramp up at the end. But it was do or die. I can rest, you know, rest of the summer. But uh, I just didn't want my teammates and, uh, and us to give up. You know, this was a great opportunity, and uh, we got lucky, and we move on now. Last thing, and we talked about this this morning, that the reason you were brought in here was to elevate this franchise to places they haven't been in a long time. Satisfying for yourself at this moment? Well, it is, because, uh, you know, a lot of critics talk about, uh, you know, this team has had question marks from day one, and, uh, you know, everybody talks about that. You know, Jason's not going to get them past the first round. He, he takes an early exit. Uh, so we've always had something to prove, and this is just another stepping stone for us to grow as a team and get better. Jason, it was a great game to watch, particularly to watch you. <laughs> TJ, take care of your dad for us. He has to get in bed. He's <laughs> past, past his bedtime. Back Thanks, there. Jason. <laughs> Mike? All right, D, the number one seed survives. They hold off the Pacers three games to two, leading a double overtime victory in the deciding game five. So one incredible buzzer beater and a dunk with seconds left to force a second overtime wasn't enough from Reggie Miller. 
as Jason Kidd had a playoff career-high 31 points to lead his Nets to the decisive victory. The Nets would advance all the way to the NBA Finals that season, but they'd be swept by the Los Angeles Lakers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed another episode of Hardwood Classics. You have entered the Steam Room, the podcast that has taken over the world.